my father died in 1979, just six months before I was born. My grandfather wrote a, a letter to him, and he actually talks about Conchalf. Mon cher Philippe, I will always remember that day of July 1963 when you joined the Conchalf II expedition along the Shabrumi Reef in the Red Sea. The sun was setting, but I would not give you time to relax. I was too impatient to show you our village under the sea. Hastily, we both donned our aqualungs and slowly, sensually, we submerged into the welcoming water, as warm as our blood. We started for an unforgettable stroll with slow strokes of our long, stretched legs and breathing deep lungfuls of air. This is it. This is it. God, I can't believe I'm here. I just can't believe it. Thinking back on what it must have been like 45 years ago, and kind of envisioning these oceanauts with silver suits, this was sci-fi. I mean, this was just before we landed on the moon. This was the first steps of humans living in an alien environment. Does it have a real sense of being placed here deliberately? And that is what's such contrast to what I usually find in terms of the remains of human culture or activities underwater where they happen to end up there by default. The five divers, oceanauts, lived on the seafloor for a month. I want to see what's inside it too. Yeah. What do you think? Today, this is all that's left of the underwater village, the garage for their submarine. Wow. How do you actually get in, Philippe? Well, there's an entrance over here, I think. This submarine would have come up underneath and, and slowly risen up into the area in here, this, this submarine garage. I can't believe I'm here. No one really understood the physiological or psychological effects of living at pressure. Here they were at twice atmospheric pressure. Every morning, a doctor carried out medical tests. We know that cuts and nicks healed faster because of the increased pressure and the oxygen at depth that caused their body to recover. We even had someone come down to give them a haircut every once in a while, even though their beards and their hair grew slower at depth. And it was so advanced for its time, wasn't it? It really, really was. Fresh food and water were brought down every day. But being French, they had wine and champagne, which was flat because under pressure the bubbles didn't expand. They did some of the first remote video capture of life underwater, videoing things that no one had ever seen before. They observed new patterns of behavior and discovered several new species was really cutting edge science and provided an incredible amount of knowledge for us to take another step towards understanding the, the relationship we have with the oceans. By the end of the month, this bold experiment had proved that man could live underwater, although the space race was to turn everyone's thoughts to a different frontier. I kept your hand in mine to guide you from Starfish House, where oceanauts were having dinner, to the onion-shaped diving saucer garage. Twilight was turning to sheer darkness, and our structures became eerie shadows. The fish were just moving pieces of the sea. I was still holding your hand when we returned to the ladder. I felt strangely proud, not of what we had achieved, but because our dreams were always shared so intimately.
I saw your shining face, proud to have something to give back to me, and I smiled, because I knew that pursuing rainbows in your plane, you would always seek You would, uh, um, because I knew that pursuing rainbows in your plane, you would always seek after the vanishing shapes of a better world.